On March 29th, Evan was reporting in the central Russian city of Ekaterinburg. He had set himself down in a cafe there in the city. And members of Russia's Federal Security Service came in, put his hood over his head, and marched him out to a van and took him away. Evan has been charged um, with the absurd crime of espionage for doing his job as a journalist. I mean, Russia doesn't need any evidence to do anything. It is a hard line authoritarian state at this point. It's not always the case. It has become that, especially since the war in Ukraine began last year. They can lock people up uh, on a whim, uh, on a baseless accusation of espionage, as in the case with Evan. Russian journalists are arrested all the time. There are hundreds of them sitting in prison on similar charges. It is a way that the Kremlin has devised to keep control of their society and make sure that they uh, have a stranglehold on, on information in the country. Evan was born in the United States, but grew up speaking Russian. He found that his ambition to become a reporter and his interest in Russia were two things that aligned. And he started to just work his way up from the bottom, as so many journalists do. And very recently landed kind of a dream job with the Wall Street Journal. Evans' arrest is obviously evidence that the relationship between the United States and Russia continues to plummet. It's also a message by the Kremlin that after long putting up with uh, Western journalists, uh, journalists who write news in another language, uh, that's no longer going to be uh, possible. I know the number of organizations after Evans' arrest had pulled their reporters out of Russia. The work that Evan and my colleagues in Moscow were doing was incredibly important and incredibly dangerous. Their work in Moscow and in Russia was more dangerous than the work my colleagues and I are doing in Ukraine, because at least in Ukraine, you know where the danger comes from. In Russia, the danger is all over the place and comes in from unexpected directions. We haven't seen much of Evan. He has had a pre-trial hearing, which was the first glimpse that we got of him. He looked healthy, he, he smiled and made faces but the communications with him have been very, very spotty. The Russian government has allowed some consular visits and some visits by his lawyers, but they've largely denied any contact with him. Evan's friends have done a wonderful thing. The Russian government by law won't accept um, letters written in any other language but Russian. And so some of his friends have uh, been diligently translating letters from various languages into Russian. He has sent out a few messages, some of which have been made public. He's mentioned that he's doing fine. He's joked about the cooking and that his mother's cooking when he was growing up had prepared him for prison food. And so he's, he seems to be communicating with us that he's in um, uh, decent spirits or as, as good of spirits as he could be in given the circumstances that he finds himself in. He would always send me notes when I had a big story come out, congratulating me on them and telling me what a great job it was. We worked at separate newspapers, and oftentimes I think the competition can get rough. Evan and I remained uh, good friends, and I know that's the that's the experience of a lot of people who know Evan. Evan is such a bright and, and friendly and, and collegial personality. There have been strong calls from the Biden administration, including from President Biden himself, to release Evan. But... A lot of the negotiations, if there are negotiations going on, are going on behind the scenes uh, at this point, um, and, and, and probably rightly so. Uh, these are delicate negotiations. Russia has made a practice out of arresting Americans and holding them hostage as part of a geopolitical strategy for getting its needs met. We saw this with the arrest of basketball star Brittany Griner. There's other Americans uh, in captivity, including Paul Whelan, who was arrested and imprisoned four years ago after he received some kind of a USB stick that the Russian government said contained classified information. I think anything could happen, but there is a pattern to these things. If you look at Brittany Griner's arrest and the arrest of several others who have gone through uh, a similar experience, um, the Russian government almost inevitably makes these individuals go through a trial process where they're found guilty and sentenced to a lengthy prison sentence. And only then will they then consent to having a negotiation for a swap. 
And so all of Evan's friends and family are fearful that he's going to have to endure this really terrible experience before any traction can be made on getting him out.